Hey guys, uh, welcome to the second part of uh, MLP. Uh, today, what we're going to do is like we are going to do a bit more of an exercise of a practical for what we have done last time. But as I recall, what we did last time it was mainly about uh, the introduction to MLP. We talk about what was MLP. We talk about uh, the different component of MLP. We talk about uh, material plan, uh, material master planning schedule i think we talk about the lead time we talk about the accuracy of information and all those things if you missed uh you didn't check that other video i really suggest you to go through that first before going to this one since this one is the second part so what are we going to cover in this part in this part mainly we are going to cover um the product structure uh, how to develop a product structure whenever you have a problem and the next video we'll talk about a uh, product structure of the timing and so on and so on so the example that we're going to talk to, we're going to take is about is still in the book of operation management supply chain and sustainability by jay Ezra and barry render is the 12th edition so we talk about exercise 14.5 the reason we wanted to take this is because it's uh, an exercise that cover most of um uh the the part that we have to see for this chapter here so let's go straight to the point we're talking about 14.5 here the question is saying that the demand for assembly s is 100 unit in week 7 each unit of s requires one unit of t and two unit of u each unit of t requires one unit of f i mean one unit of v two unit of w and one unit of x finally each of unit each unit of u, I mean, required two units of y and three units of z. One firm manufactures all item. It takes two weeks to manufacture S, one week to manufacture T, and two weeks to manufacture U, two weeks to manufacture V, three weeks to manufacture W, one week to manufacture X, two weeks to manufacture Y, and one week to manufacture Z. So the question is to construct a product structure to identify all level, parent, and component. Then we also prepare a term, prepare a term phase uh struct product structure but for the sake of this video we are going to do only the first part which is about con constructing a product structure first the second question will be done in the next video and so on and so on so let's go back to the first question for the sake of um just because this is a video that for educational purpose only we're talking about units that are not really mentioned we're talking about sub assembly b I mean S, I mean, it can be anything, it can be a computer, it can be a motherboard, it can be uh, a tire, it can be a car, it can be a food, it can be anything that needs to be assembled and produced. This is what is happening. But just for uniformity purpose, we are using alphabet here. So in short, what does this exercise mean? There's this company that needs to manufacture a product that is called S. So this product got different components that have been given to us. What we need to do is like we need to develop a product structure tree for this product. It's more like a family tree. We need to develop a family tree of this product to specify if we need to, put, to manufacture this S here, how many of each component we will need. So this is how it works the first thing that we have to do first of all is after getting gathering all the information we will have to design that product how do you go about it well we're gonna draw a smart art then from there we are going to draw our uh, our product I don't want it to be too big because I want everyone to uh, I mean I want it to be big enough so that everyone will be able to see well this is an initial part already we'll start with here so the first thing that needs to, pro to be product uh, to be produced here they say that it's, it's a sub assembly s so from our schedule what the initial product is going to be s this is what needs to be produced so they said that um each unit of s requires one unit of t and two unit of u so it means that s got two product the first one is t and how many t do we need to produce we need to produce one between bracket one so this number one just tells us that we need to produce one t one unit of t and then they say each unit of s require one unit of t and two unit of u so it means that s got two, two kit t and u 
so you have u here that need to be produced at two so this other one is not part so it's going to be deleted so this is how the product looks like so at this level here s is considered to be a parent and t is supposed to be t and u are supposed to be the kid why because they are coming straight from s so S is the parent and T and U, which are the component, will be considered as kid. So let's proceed again. So they say that each unit of T requires one unit of V. So we are under T now. They say that each unit of T requires, we will add a shape below. I think it got two kid. So we'll add two shapes below. So they say that uh, each unit of T requires one unit of V and two units of w and one unit of x so it means that it requires three items below so we're gonna make it in a standard form so that able everyone will be able to see so we have the first they say t requires one v so we are here t requires v that is one then after requiring v uh, t requires one v it requires also two unit of w so we go back here we check our w then it is two unit then after the w we have one unit of x then we look at our x here which is one unit now remember that all of them are coming straight from t and the numbers between brackets tells you the number of units that you need to get for that component or particular particular item so they say that finally each unit of u requires two unit of y and three unit of z so we are looking at our u here it got two uh kit so we'll add a shape below and we add another shape uh below so it's gonna be a standard form um like this so what we have here is the standard form and then next they say that finally each unit of u requires two units of y and three units of z so we'll get here we got what we call uh we got y which is two unit and z which is a three unit so actually we have done our product structure and we're done we have answered question a so product structure is just like we have seen here it's just determining a product structure of uh of a component so the information that is given here one firm manufactures all item and then they give you this is the lead stamp that we'll need in other questions but so far with this question here you found out that we have constructed our product structure and we have identified all the levels well we have not yet identified the level so the first part is done then the next thing is to be able to identify our levels so what do they mean by levels we have this product structure or we can call it a, a tree for s you find out that the first thing that we need to do is to identify the levels by level we specify that the first product which is s it's because it's on top we will have to we'll draw a test book here yeah. sorry we'll have to draw one here yeah. so we'll call this level zero why because it is the very first level it is called level zero and generally for not generally for every item that is the main component to be produced is always always going to be level zero and obviously if this is level zero then the second one is going to be level um one that we would have below here and the third one will be level two so we have level one and level two so which means that for this question here we have three levels the first one is level one the second one is level two i mean uh, the first one is level zero the second is level one and the third one is level two i'm going to put an arrow just to allow you uh to understand so this one here is for level uh, zero and this other is for level two and the last one here i mean is for level well is the third level which is level two so we have identified our level it depends maybe for we could have we could have been given again saying that um 
Y is made maybe of another component. So this component here would have been part of level, not level 2 anymore, but it should have been part of level 3, like this. Let's say, for example, we had another component here that was component A, and then it was required two units like this. So whatever we got here is going to be level 4, uh, level 3. So it's going to be the fourth level, but from uh, it's going to be called level 3. So you should be able to identify this different level, but this is not really a big issue based on what you have seen here. So this one we have level 0, level 1, level 2. So we have solved also the second part that asks us to identify the levels. So we must now be able to ask the, to answer the third part that wants us to identify the parent and the component. So it's either parent, it's either component or kid is still the same thing. Now in this part here, if we need to identify the parent, we will say that our graph here got, so we'll call them parent. What am I doing? Um, where am I? So let's add another test box to add the parent. And then the font, let's increase it. So the parent here, we have to find out the parent and then we have to find the kids slash component is still the same. You can still call them parent or component is still the same. So in this case here, how many parent do we have? Initially, S is the first parent. Why? Because it has two kids, T and W. But we also have T, that is a kids to s but it's also a parent to v w and x so you also have t as a parent and the last one is going to be u why because you also get two kids which is or two component which is y and z so in total the number of parent here we got three parent then the other question is asking us to find the number of kid or component for you to identify this, I'll always advise to start from the top, from the first level. And you look at who is coming from where exactly, then you'll be able to determine. Like the, initially, we said S as two component T and U. Initially, that means already they become a kid and S is a parent. You look at T again, T as three component, that means it is already a parent. If there's a, pro a, a product without a component like X, for example, it is not a parent. Then next, we go to the kid. Talking about the kid, we have S that is two kid, which is T and U. So T and U are kid. And you also have to add V, W, and X. V, uh, W, and X. They are kid to T, as well as Y and Z, which are uh, kid or component to you. So you understand that the same product can be a parent. And it can also be a kid. On one level, it can be a kid. On another level, it is a parent. That's what I was talking about uh, the, the family tree of a product. Because when you look at this, it's more like a family tree where we have the parent that have kids that get also other kids and so on. And we have three or four generations. So the generations here are replaced by the cells. Now, there's another thing that whenever you are working, it's called low level coding. Low level coding is. Well, in a previous, in another example, I'm going to show you in the next video what is low-level coding with a proper example so that we will be on the same level. But so far, this is all about this video here. So I really hope that it was helpful. To, I mean, it was helpful to you. Whatever we have done, we have answered question A of exercise 14.5. We have constructed the product structure. We have identified the level and we have identified the parent and the component. So in our next video, we will prepare a time phase for the same question. So stay tuned and I really hope that this video was helpful. Thank you so much for your time and don't forget to subscribe to the page. Thank you.